Hey everybody! So happy to have you here. This is the Savvy Show where we talk all about growing your virtual assistant business from scratch. And I'm so excited that you guys are joining me, whether you're joining live or via a replay. Either way, we're super excited that you're here. And you're here because you want to learn more about making money from home. And that's really exciting because today we have several guests with us, three virtual assistants who have been able to scale their own business to $5,000 a month or more. And I can't wait to jump in and to pick their brain. You guys have asked a ton of questions and we're just gonna dive right into those questions. So for those of you joining us, looks like we already have 20 some people. I love it, yay. Um, make sure that you're asking questions below too. Uh, give us feedback. The more feedback you give us, the more people will actually see this video, like the way Facebook works. And so we wanna get this message out. Um, as much as you love being a VA, or maybe you're just getting started and you're excited, I want other people to know that message too. So, um, so comment, share, like this video. Um, and I also wanted to let you guys know if you are just getting started as a virtual assistant and you need to know like what are my next steps, you're gonna listen to this interview, these interviews, and you're like, man, I wanna do that same thing, but I have no idea where to get started. You can go to virtualassistantchecklist.com all one word, virtualassistantchecklist.com. And uh, I'll put a link above this video after it. And uh, and you can get my step-by-step -step checklist for getting started as a virtual assistant. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce each of the ladies that we have here. And I'm gonna give them a chance to tell you a little bit about how they got started and how long they've been in business. And then we'll get into some of the nitty gritty asking some of those questions that you guys had about how to scale to 5k months okay um so um just so you guys know as well um i can have three people on the screen at one time but there are four of us total so i'll be rotating um and and answering the questions as we go okay everybody's so excited hello we have adrian here melinda sarah alicia Le uh Les leslie lesla i'm like my eyes are going crazy. Um, Mila, so excited to have you guys here. We are gonna get started. All right, so I'm gonna bring on LK and Lynn first. You guys can get to know them. Here we go. Hey, ladies. Hello, hello. Hi. So happy to have you guys here. We also have Nicole hanging out in the lobby. So in just a moment, I'll bring her on as well. So she's waiting patiently um, to answer these questions as well. But hey, let's just go right in. I know everybody's really, really eager to hear you guys' story and how you got started. So um, if, if you guys just want to tell me basically just a little bit of an intro who you are tell us about your business promo that thing that's fine <laughs> so tell us about who you are and um how you got started as a virtual assistant lk do you want to go first sure what's going on guys it's latonja king here i go by lk and i have been in business for about three years that's when i started um it was around the time that i was pregnant with my first son who is brightly three years old he's a terrible threes and i just didn't want to go back to my corporate lifestyle um i wanted to be home with my baby and i wanted to raise him the way i wanted to um i wanted him to learn from his mother and i just wanted him to have that time with me that was my goal and i'm happy that i did so i actually found out about va work through abby she was one of the first that i found and I quickly just dove in. I wanted to learn more. I wanted to figure out how could I get myself to this point. And unfortunately, I just up and quit my job. I did not wait. <laughs> I did not. I gave my two weeks notice after my son was born, and that was it for me. I didn't work a nine to five while transitioning into the. I kind of just dove in. That's just basically my story. <laughs> I do <didn't> very <laughs> similar. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like. <laughs> Do, uh, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> I recommend having a plan if you're going to transition from your nine to five. But I did the same thing. I was like, forget this. I'm not going back. 
<laughs> yep. yep. Yeah, I definitely think also, we have Lynn, a oh, go ahead. What would you say? No, I agree with you. I definitely think you should have a plan. But, you know, for those of us who are just completely just washed out and tired, you know, don't let fear hold you back. Totally. I love it. So, Lynn, why don't you tell us how you yeah. got started? And I'll bring Nicole in <laughs> as well as you're chatting. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm happy to be here. And hopefully some of the tips I have or a bit of my story encourages anyone to stick with the it is possible to make more than 5000 a month. I have been an executive assistant, personal assistant for corporate executives for the last 15 years. And I was made redundant in the company I was with and the person I was supporting. I was given an option of either stay within corporate and support someone else or get packaged out. I decided to take the package because although I love supporting people, I was tired of, in a sense of just supporting one person with so many entrepreneurs out there. And I have, uh, I have, I'm a general, I'm not a specialist, so I'm a general VA. And I sort of took, I took a year off and, you know, introduced myself to Abby and I'll, knowing that it is possible in order to have this as a lifestyle and also i live in canada so my ultimate goal is to be able to spend three months of the winter somewhere sunny and i need i need a, a way that i could do that so it's um yeah so i just started um you know uh building a website and you know going to meetups and really listening to people on what is, you know, what's their pain point? What do people really need and how could I help? And, you know, and I focus, my focus is on corporate. That's where I'm very comfortable. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, I know a lot of people want to dive into, especially being a general VA, how you've managed to scale to that point. So I'm excited, very excited to jump into that. Let's give Nicole a chance to introduce herself and then we'll start diving into some of these questions. Hi, everybody. I'm super excited to be here. I, um, I worked in corporate for 10 plus years and I was working for a company, a very, very large company. And I just felt like it was so hard to succeed and any of the successes I was having weren't being necessarily rewarded in what I thought was the right way. Um, I actually found the VA world through a podcast, Jenna Kutcher's uh, Gold Diggers podcast and listened to it. And I was like, man, this is totally something I can do. I've always had the entrepreneurial spirit. I have a photography business, so I knew I could run a business. Um, and I was working from home anyways, remotely for my corporate job. It was requiring me to come into the office one week a month, which required me to drive two and a half hours to wow. the office. Um, fortunately, I was able to stay with my family, so I wasn't like living out of a hotel or anything. Um, but it just came to the point where I was just fed up with jumping over hoops and hurdles and, and being successful, but not being successful in, in the company. Um, and that was really frustrating and I wanted control over my own success and over my own income. Um, so I just, I, I talked to my boyfriend at the time and I told him, I said, you know, this is what I want to do. And he was incredibly supportive. And uh, so I gave my month's notice. I think it was like my birthday in June. I gave my month's notice and they ended up keeping me on for an additional six weeks after my month's notice because they weren't ready for me to leave and they weren't ready to transition all my accounts. Um, and then I'll, you know, six weeks or whatever it was into that, I, I said to them, I said, I have to go. Like I'm running this other business. I have to go. Um, and so then after I jumped full time, it was like sink or swim. So I just fully put myself out there, talked to everyone um, and anyone that I could and told them about what I could do. And the more people I talk to, the more confident I get. So it's just been an incredible journey. And I'm so fortunate to be part of this community um, and I love learning everything and, and reading all the posts um, and uh, Abby's um, helpful documents were incredible and they really helped me get started, especially the checklist and some of the other things that you have available on your site. So that's been really incredible. Awesome. Oh, thank you. Um, so are you currently a, um, a generalist or a specialist and do you make a transition? Like what services do you offer currently? So I am more of a generalist. 
Um, I get a lot of my clients through referrals, but every single client that comes my way, I do a discovery call and we talk about their business needs. Um, and then we kind of, uh, uh, we create a plan to see if my business fits their business. Um, and I'm pretty selective about who I take on to my, as a client, because I want them to fit my personality and I want them to fit my business and work style. Um, and it's, it's like I said, it's been an incredible journey and I, uh, the referrals that I get are good referrals because they're coming from clients that know me and they know my work style. Um, and a lot of my clients have become like friends to me. So it, it's yeah. just, were you picky in the beginning or did you transition? Like, were you like kind of anyone at first and then you transitioned or were you, were you picky from the beginning? So I was, so I did a little graphic design. So I was doing a lot of free designs for a lot of people just to build up my portfolio. Um, so in that sense, I wasn't picky at all. But when it came to my full-time clients or my, I guess they're part-time clients, but they've been with me since the beginning, um, which is about seven or eight, eight months now. Um, I, I was very picky. Like if I didn't feel good about talking to them on the phone, I wouldn't move forward with them. Um, but fortunately I've only had maybe one or two that have come my way that don't really fit with who I am and, and the way my business works. So it's, um, I'm, I'm pretty much general. Um, but as time goes on, my one story I can tell is I, I got a client, they started with me for 10 hours a month. Within the first week, they realized that they wanted to up to 30 hours a month. Um, and we started with general VA stuff and then they started to trust me more and then they give, were giving me more of social media and marketing and now they want me for up to 80 hours a month. So amazing. Uh, yeah, it, so getting in and starting with clients small is not necessarily a bad thing um, as long as they, under, they want you to grow with them. And I think a lot of my clients have understood that and. And that's, that's kind of how I've been growing with, with my clients. Awesome. All right. LK, I would love to hear um, if you're a generalist or a specialist, and if that was a transition you made, and I'm going to bring Lynn in too. Okay. Go ahead and, and tell us about that, LK. Well, I am actually a specialist. Um, I transitioned from general VA to an online business manager. And that was the best fit for me um, because I did business management in my corporate field. I actually ended up contracting both of the companies that I used to work for on the side when I transitioned back into online business management. So I still work for those companies just as a contractor. And I also work for online entrepreneurs. And to give you a gist of how I work, I have four online entrepreneurs that I'm working with, and I have five corporate executive level um, clients right now. And it's truly a blessing. Um, I definitely suggest picking something that works best for you. When you're just starting out, General VA is the best way to go because you will quickly learn what you like to do and what you don't like to do. And if you really want to get heads up on that, you know, definitely writing down what you are capable of doing and then out of that list, what you love to do. Um, and that's basically trial and error. I mean, you're going to get clients that you, you know, get the groove. You're like, yes, we can work together forever. And then you're going to find out that some of those clients aren't so great. Um, I have to be honest with you. When I started out, I was not picky at all. <laughs> not at all. I was getting clients left and right. I was grabbing them. I was like, yes, like I got clients and I'm getting paid and it's working out. And I quickly found out that no, it wasn't working out. And I needed to transition to being very picky. Um, so now I have a questionnaire and I go through that with my clients to find if they're a good fit for me because I now know my learning style. I know how I operate with other people. And I ask those questions that can relate them back to me. If I know that they're answering the questions and we're clinging, that it's a great fit. Now, you're not always going to be able to find out for sure if that client is a good fit till you bring them on board. But it's good to have a system to know, you know, hey, you know, if you answer these questions this way, this way, then it seems that we're a good fit. If not, then it might be best that I transition to you to one of my other, you know, uh, family of VAs here in the virtual savvies group who might be a better fit. 
it's okay to turn down people um, because at the end of the day, this is your business. And I learned very quickly that um, I had to be very systematic with how I wanted to run my business in order to make me happy. Because if you're, if you're, there's no point of having a business if you're, you know, you're distraught, you're stressing yourself out. Um, mm -hmm. And personally, eliminate that if you can. Um, at the amount of hours that I work, I work a four day work week. Um, and I work approximately 20 hours a week. And I do have a team um, now. I have a team that I built that helps me along the way. So I have, I also work with my corporate level teams outside of my regular team. So that's just the gist of how I work. And I set my, my routine up based off of, you know, the amount of work I have that week. So if one of my clients is launching, like currently I'm in the middle of a launch, a physical product launch, one of my clients is launching a doll company, um, then that's going to take up, of course, more of my time. But you allocate that based off of, you know, your marketing, like where are you at with each of your clients? So um, I definitely think it's possible. I know it's possible. You guys just have to, you know, take it easy on yourself and <laughs> and start to really understand like, OK, well, is this for me? You know, like, should I be doing social media marketing or should I be a general VA? As you can see, Lynn and Nicole, like they're killing it and they're generalized and they're happy doing what they do. You know, yeah. you don't nobody said that you had to specialize in one particular thing. Don't get caught up in the hype. Yep. Yeah. And that's uh, so much. A couple of key things I want to pull out of what you said. Um, one, I, I'm a huge fan, guys, is of there's not one way to grow this because you're building a business around you about what you're skilled at, about what your preferences are, about what the way you like to work, the people you like to work with. And so there, I mean, I would be honest with you, I would be a terrible OBM. I would be, if anybody knows me personally, they would say amen to that because I am, I am not the most, or I'm a very like visionary big picture person. And so getting down to the details, like I could barely organize my own stuff, organizing somebody else's. So that would be a bad fit for me. Um, but I think that a big thing is just knowing your own strengths and and really diving into the things that already interest you. And um, I, I love what you said too in, in the beginning. I, I think that there's not even one way to start. So, um, you know, how, how Nicole, she was, she was a little bit more picky from the beginning, but okay, you were like, no, like I'm just gonna put myself my, put myself out there and see who see who comes my way. And I think that it kind of depends on your own situation. If you're like, man, I need clients now. Like I need clients yesterday. Then and and you don't necessarily have a specific service. It's okay to say I'm a VA. I have all these services, and I'll help anyone who comes my way. Because what's going to happen is exactly what LK said. You're gonna get some people that aren't a good fit. That's just part of the business. But I think that um, if, if you need money yesterday, then just get out there, go to some networking meetings and start bringing on clients. And you're going to find very, very quickly who you enjoy working with and who you don't enjoy working with. And that's OK. If you have a little bit more time or if you already have a specialty, then it's OK to go ahead and do that from the very beginning and say, nope, I'm going to be picky from the beginning. I'm only going to work with the, the very best the top tier clients. And it may take you a little bit longer to get those clients, but when you get them, they're going to be really high quality. They'll likely be higher paying clients. And I think that that's okay too. And so I think that's like the overall theme of what you're saying is like, it's okay. <laughs> you know, either way that you do it, you can be successful. It's really just about getting out there, right? Getting out there and marketing yourself, getting some clients, which is what we'll talk about in a second. But I do want to hear from Lynn first about a little about you, about your story when you got started and um and what your business looks like now okay <clears throat> well i started just over a year ago i'm 13 months into um into my journey as va and i originally started with i'm not going to say accept anybody because i have a trial pack i have a trial discount offer on my website and it's a one month commitment and the idea is just to see if we gel and it's so important for me as a VA to make sure that I'm adding value and I'm providing quality service to people and also I need to make sure that we 
we our communication styles <clears throat> excuse me our communication styles are are in sync so i would um post i would go to meetups and different events in the city i live in a large city toronto and there's always free events going on i would um just go and actually listen to people because everyone in these networking events is in sales mode and no one's really into listening mode. So I would go in and try to listen <clears throat> and for specifically wait for people to. I'm like sale, 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 sale. But when you're in a room with everyone with that mentality, it's just not. It's it's not it's not a positive place to be. You want to have a two way communication. Um, I also started going to local businesses. I have because I'm a generous. I have some social media and some web experience. I would go to local nail salons, mom and pop shops and just walk in on a Wednesday and say, you know what, I've looked at your website and here's some suggestions that I have. I'm fairly new to this. I'm not going to charge you for anything, but just to have a separate set of eyes. And I would drop off things and I wouldn't ask for a sale. I was just giving them something without expectation. The key is I have more experience than they do. I'm not an expert, but I can deliver something. Um, <clears throat> so I've probably had a total of about six or seven clients since I launched. Right now, <clears throat> I have, and most of them have been all corporate clients. I've had doc, uh, dentists, lawyers, uh, financial, <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me, uh, people in uh, the financial industry and now I have one main client and I work 20 three days a week for them um, what I have one day as as an overflow and I'm I will be moving forward um, in order to expand but right now I'm still I, I'm still fairly new it's only been it's only been just over a year and I think I had mentioned that I just invoiced eight thousand dollars last mm -hmm. month for I, I spent I actually worked about thirty two hours that mm -hmm. week. But um, anyway, so the business is there, <clears throat> and there's so many people that need help. It's just a matter of listening and solving a problem, oh, and them willing to pay. Them willing to pay. <laughs> Um, oh, so, so guys, you, you so many golden nuggets here. I love this so much. So, uh, well, one quick question. Do, so right now you don't have a team then, right? It's all you right now? It's just me. And I do subcontract some work out through your website, through Facebook. I've hired a couple subcontractors, uh, some VA savvies. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just a quick turnaround thing. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Oh, okay. So the biggest thing that I'm hearing here is, um, oh, and this is just so golden. It sounds like your entire strategy is like, I'm, I'm going to give more than I, more than I take, right? Like I'm going to, yeah. when you show up to meetup groups, when you're showing up to live networking, it's, I'm going to listen. I'm not just going to go and talk about myself. I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen for problems. I'm going to listen to people love to talk about themselves. <laughs> and so for they someone do. to actually listen and pay attention to their needs is huge. So I'm going to listen there. I'm going to go to these, like the storefronts, man, that talk about boldness guys. I mean, if you, if you think, Oh, there aren't any businesses out there that need my need that, that need my services. Lynn is, is going to, to corporate clients just to, the dental offices in her area. And, um, <clears throat> and once you start to get those clients, word does start to spread as well. And I think that that's a big thing. A lot of times we're like, Oh, where am I going to find all these clients? You don't have to necessarily find all the clients. Once you get out there and you start, you start working with people, I guarantee promise you the clients will you'll start getting referrals. Okay. So it does marketing does as soon as basically as soon as you get the hang of marketing, marketing gets easier because you have referrals coming in. Um, uh, but so golden. Oh my goodness. I love this so much. Okay. So I'm going to bring on Nicole and LK and I want to know from you guys, if you are doing, 
um, packages or hourly, uh, how that's working out in your business right now. Bring on Nicole here first. All right. So are you, are you packaged? Are you hourly? How's that working for you? So my packages are hourly. So I have a 10, a 20, a 30, and a 40 hour a month package. Um, seven of my eight clients are that. And then I have one graphic design client that um, it's just project based and we charge um, by the, the graphic design and it's a, a different contract that I have set in place with them. Um, but most of my clients are 10, um, and 30 to 40 hours a month clients. Now I do set it up that hours don't roll over to the next month. And if they exceed the number of hours, then they go to my, um, base rate of $50 an hour. So if they purchase 40 and they go over the 40, anything over 40 is the $50 an hour not the discounted rate of the, um, the 40 hour a month package, which has been working out really great for me. And my clients all, this, all see the value in what I'm offering them. So I, I've never had an issue with getting paid or um, negotiating my prices or rates. So did you start at 50 an hour or did you work up to that point? Um, so when I first started, my packages were a little bit lower. I did um, increase them at the beginning of this year. Some of my clients that I started with um, are on different packages and I need to slowly transition them to the, the higher rate package. I didn't wanna just flip them up to the higher rate. Um, but anyone since the beginning of the year is are on my new rates. Um, so I am higher than I, I started at. I started at 40, so. I think that, I mean, some of us are like, oh my goodness, I can't imagine charging $50 an hour, but there is something to be said about charge when you charge that rate there there's a value associated with it it's like okay i'm paying this much because this is this is a high quality person this is a person that's going to get stuff done and get it done well so i think that you do um you know start to attract the clients that are willing to pay that they're actually at what i found they're usually more i enjoy working with those people more um not that you know it's more more established businesses um, can generally pay the $50 an hour, 40, whatever. Um, and so when more established, when you're a more established business, you already have some systems down. There's already some things going. It's not like they're wanting you to just create something out of thin air. Like I, I had some clients starting out that I think were like $20 an hour clients and they were like, I want to, I want to like have a sales funnel. And I'm like, okay, like, what do you want to sell? I don't know. I just, I heard I want to have a sales funnel. We need to make one. And I'm like, okay um like i was not a sales funnel person i had never ran an ad in my life so i was like okay i can research some stuff and we can try this but like they were just they would just throw out random stuff because they didn't they didn't have a plan of their own and so um those people weren't necessarily as fun to work with <laughs> um okay i would love to hear from you um if you know packages hourly was it a transition how did that work out for you so I did, when I started as a VA, I did do hourly. And I'm just going to be honest with you guys, Nicole, you are better than me. I hate hourly so much. Like, it's just not go with everything right here home over here. I, I can't stand having to, um, having to record my hours, you know, sending in my hour time sheet. That's just way too much for me, especially since I wanted to put my business on automation. So what I do now is packages and I do everything with packages um, for when I'm working with smaller entrepreneurs. I have a set package when I'm working with corporate level enterprises. I have customizable proposals that I create for them. And, you know, that's just how I do it. Um, it's they know what I'm giving them. They know what, they, what they're coming for me for. Again, I'm I have a specialty. OK, so this goes back to I specialize. Nicole, she's general. So she can definitely do that. Absolutely. You know, for me personally, I have to make sure that, you know, you know, you're coming for me for system strategy, building your systems, your policies, your procedures, getting your business order, you know, working with your teams for team development and leadership. That's what you're getting from me. And you know that. So there's no need for me to clock on the hour because this is what I'm giving you. Um, and for those of you who are general VAs, if you want to transition into packages, you know, you can also do that. Um, 
Nicole, it works better for Nicole to do hers hourly. You know, she might transition to packages, you know, differently, but it's all in what you want to put, you know, how you want to operate your business. And personally, packages, are for me. I cannot stress that enough. I, I love being specific about what it is that I want to offer to them. They know what they're coming to me for. And there's no need for me to have to, you know, tally up all of my hours. And I think depending on what type of VA you are, again, like if you're in social media, um, net, social media marketing, things of that nature, you can create packages easily. Um, because people think that for whatever reason, again, this goes back to educating your clients. Um, that social media marketing is just you putting a picture on Instagram and it's getting likes. And we all know that that is just not the truth. <laughs> it takes so much work to um, really hone in on your audience, target audience, right? You have to know what your what type of company you, the person you're working for has, what type of people are attracted to, what um, what services your client is offering. So therefore, you have to customize, right, their social media. It's and you know it's so much more than just posting a picture. So Think about packaging instead of hourly. Um, it's definitely something that could take a lot of stress off of you. Uh, but then again, like like Nicole was saying, if you're just that type of person who really likes to just, you know, okay, this is how many hours I set, and then if you go over these hours, you have to hit my, you know, my fifty dollar an hour mark. That's perfectly fine too, because her clients know her worth, right? And I also go by the three, six, nine, twelve method. When I'm first bringing on a client, again, because I am specialized, I specialize in a specific area, um, my first three month contract is for only new clients because I feel like the first 30 days you're onboarding that client. Yeah, it takes 30 days to fully onboard a client because onboarding is just not just sending a contract. It's not just having them pay their first invoice. It's really getting to know your client, how they work, how you work, adapting to one another. Then that next 60 days, you're starting to get in the flow of things. By that time, they know if they want to sign that six, nine or 12 month contract with you based off of how well you guys are adapting to one another. And then once you once you have you know sent that new uh, contract out to them, they know for a fact that, OK, let's go on, Latanja, let's do a six month contract. And from then on, all my current clients are either on a six, nine or 12 month contract, depending on the project that they have for me. So, you know. Really, there you can do it any type of way. There's no wrong or right way to do it. <laughs> the only wrong way is to charge less than twenty dollars an hour. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm telling you, don't get me charge more. <laughs> no. Um, okay, so I, I'm going to um, I'm going to bring Lynn back in because um, I know that Lynn and LK both work with some corporate. Well, actually, I think all three of you work with some corporate client, clients, but um, I wanna have, let's see, oops. Mm -hmm. I brought the wrong person in. <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna bring Lynn back in uh, because we have a question here. Um, uh, Janice says, uh, like someone else asked, uh, Mila asked, how do you convince clients who are new to the idea of a VA? Because it sounds like both of you have worked with people who um, are not in the online space. So I'd love to hear your uh, thoughts on this. How, how, do you, um, how do you convince clients who are new to the idea of a VA? I think that many people still want the staff to be there in the office for whatever reason, such as being immediately contactable or something like that. So do either of you have something that um, if you walk in and, and or you're talking with a corporate client for the first time and they're like, wait, I have no idea what a virtual assistant is or maybe in a, in a networking meeting that you go to. So people who aren't familiar with the world, uh, so I'm sorry, Lynn, do you mind if I go first? No, go ahead. So that's a great question. Um, I always tell my mentorees that you need to educate your client all the time. I mean, it is a growing experience. Every time I walk into a networking event and I do, I go to military bases. I work, you know, with the military. I also go to, um, you know, um, hiring events, you know, where people are going to hire and, and looking for people because they don't understand the quality that you bring. It's going to save them money in the long run, right? You have to educate them. Listen, I'm going to I'm going to act like Abby is like the corporate person. Hi, Abby, how you doing? My name's LK. So, listen, this is the services that I offer. I'm an online business manager, and I can help you take your business to the next level. I understand that the convenience of having someone in the office with you is fantastic. However, I make myself 
available to you during my business hours as well as my entire team. Not only that, but you don't have to worry about hiring me, you know, giving me my my PTO time, my sick leave, you know, having to bring me on to the health insurance, all of that. I take on that on my own business. So I'm saving you money. You know, it's it's all about educating that client. You yeah. have to let them know what you're giving them and how you're saving them money. Always okay. make sure you know what you're doing. I think people are like probably like writing down. They're like, OK, say it all again. I have to write it all down. <laughs> that, was, that was awesome. <laughs> say that and you're golden. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> Lynn, I would love to hear from you. How do you face those objections? Uh, one of my strategies uh, starting my business day one is I only want to work with clients in my own city. And that is because our relationship is built on trust. And although I work virtually, I maybe once a month, I might make myself available. Uh, and it's my choice to go into the office and say hello and meet, meet staff and just connect or attend events in the city. I find it's I can add extra value if I'm planning an event I know you know I know venues I know local restaurants I know so it's building that relationship with someone who's going to pay me a decent salary or a decent hourly wage and and knowing I guess giving them the peace of mind knowing that they could come and knock on my front door <laughs> if they wanted to or I am available to them so okay. it's uh so I just I prefer to work with local people I love that you know um I think a lot of us think that uh, one of the I I, I I lost it. There's like so many comments, but one person said, you know, I love, I love hearing the whole idea of being generalized in the beginning and how people can be successful with that because I've heard so much, like you have to have a niche, you have to have a niche, you have to have a niche. And so there's a couple of things I'll say to that. Number one is that, um, uh, you know, riches are in the niches, that whole like thing. Um, I do agree that there is something to be said for having a niche, um, especially when it comes to, um, the, the online world, like course creation, like I, you know, I'm a course creator now I've kind of transitioned a little bit, um, away from services and I do more courses and coaching. I think for that, it's so important to be super, super specific about like who you help and, and, and having a really specific audience. But when it comes to services, especially when you're first getting started, I do think it is that it's okay. And even a good idea to be more generalized. And then you'll, and then you will likely find yourself in so, some sort of a niche in some sense. And what I'm hearing, Lynn, it's actually, I think a lot of us haven't really thought of this. I don't know if I've even thought of it this way, but in a sense you like, what is a niche? A niche is, you are the go-to person for that thing, right? So a lot of us think like, okay, well then I have to be like a Pinterest manager and that'll be my niche. Or I have to only, you know, work with photographers and that'll be my niche. But I mean, you are the go-to person in your city. And that in a sense is what you've made your niche to be is that I am the virtual assistant for, where do you live again? In Toronto. I am the virtual yeah, assistant for Toronto. Like if someone needs a VA in Toronto, you are the person, you know? And so in a sense, you have like created a niche for yourself. And, and I think that that, um, whether you choose that in the beginning or whether that happens over time, um, I, I just, I, I do think that it is cool to eventually um, do that. But again, it's not the only way, right? Because I think Nicole's over here like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of helping, you know, whoever. And, um, and I, I think that, knowing that there's not one wrong way to do it. The biggest thing is just, you know, deciding what you're going to do, stick to it, stick to it long enough to see it through. I think that that's um, a lot of us just, we get frustrated in the very beginning because we're having a hard time finding clients and um, just, just stick to it and, and try a couple different marketing. If something marketing wise isn't working for you, let's tweak it. Don't give up, but tweak it and uh and 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 keep going forward so i'd love to um i want to respect everybody's time so let's do this um let's have each of you i would love to hear like talk a little bit about the marketing aspect maybe where you found your first client and um where you're finding clients um uh, or, or like if that if your marketing 
has changed at all. So where you found your first client and kind of where you're finding clients now. And we'll hear that from each of you. And then here's what we're going to do, guys. Um, I, I know that there's tons of questions in, in the comments. I will go through and um, for the next, you know, for the next week, I'll go in and I'll be answering questions. So even if you're watching a replay, definitely keep answering, um, asking questions. I'll answer them. And if, if any of the ladies here want to, you know, come visit this thread, um, in the next, you know, 24, 48 hours, I'd love to, to have you guys commenting below too. Um, so that way we can continue to answer your questions because I know you guys have a lot of them and we definitely want to help with that. So um, let's ask that question really quickly. Um, Lynn, Nicole, whoever wants to go first, where did you find your first client and does your marketing look different now? Um, okay, I'll, I'll go first. First, my first ads on Kijiji and Craigslist, and it was just I'm offering these services with, but I need to meet people in person. And I think most of my clients came from came from ads I had placed and also from my website but I've been so busy I haven't updated my website since I launched <laughs> and so, um, I could help them and other ones I wanted to help them but they weren't in my market they were looking for freebies and that freebies doesn't work for me mm -hmm. <laughs> you need to pay me <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, it's just so. And now I, I have my one client who's on. I just renewed them for an annual contract, and I'm focusing on other entrepreneurs. And eventually, I'd like to build a business and just focus on entrepreneurs and in the financial corporate industry. Awesome. So you got your very first client if it, it, it cut out there for a second. You got your very first client. You're saying like you put you actually put an ad out on Craigslist. So like what yeah. section did you put that under? I haven't I actually have not tried that method. I've looked for other people looking for VAs and done like proposals to them, but I have never done the strategy of putting out an ad myself. So where how did you how did you do that? I think it was in miscellaneous um and i was very clear i'm a professional uh a virtual assistant i have corp i have a corporate background i'm interested in helping entrepreneurs or pretty much anybody but serious inquiries only and you know sometimes you got people who didn't read the ad and they were looking for uh like physiotherapists or like people to go to their home and yeah. You know, it's just like, no, this is, you know, that's not what I do. This is business. <laughs> so, but yeah, I think I, I received about four clients. Awesome. From, yeah. Very cool. I love that. And I know that you do a lot of live networking events too, especially since you concentrate so much on local. So I, I absolutely, I love, love that. Nicole, how did you get your first client and has your marketing changed since that point? Yeah, my marketing's changed dramatically, I think, from when I first started. Um, I knew nothing about the VA world. So coming in, coming in it was just. It was just uh, oh, okay. Uh, Let me. Here, try now. Okay. Okay. okay <laughs> so it was just me. It was me talking to people. It was me reaching out to people and telling them, you know, what a VA is, what a VA does. You know, there's a lot of people who don't understand the industry, don't even know that it exists. So when you say reaching out to people, would that be like local people? Like, who are these people? Yeah. So first it was my immediate circle, like my family, my friends, my business owners that I knew in my immediate circle, asking them if they would ever consider it, just trying to get feedback from them. Um, some of my first clients were local. They're not my clients anymore. Um, when I started transitioning more to um, different companies, so a lot of my companies right now are startup companies out in uh, California. I'm on the East Coast. A lot of my companies are on the West Coast. Um, I started marketing differently. So a lot of my marketing came through referrals. Um, and just doing a really good job for my clients, and my clients are referring me to other clients, and they're refer referring me to other clients. Since the beginning of this year, I've, um, I've talked to five or six referrals, and I've signed four of them. 
So that's super exciting for me. Um, I know that some people are afraid to get referrals because of pricing. And what I want to tell people is don't be afraid of that. Like my clients understand and value me. So they don't tell their referrals like what they're paying me or what the rates that they're paying me are. And I make sure that I always have my updated rates on my website because a referral is going to go to your website probably first um, before they talk to you because they want to check you out. Um, but word of mouth referral is for me the best marketing strategy because your clients are, are, are highlighting you, your, your strengths. Um, and what they love most about you and they value who you are and the time that you give them back. So at the beginning, I was just trying to get clients and being very selective about who I was working with. But now I'm getting the right clients referred to me and I don't have a whole lot of marketing that I have to do because I know that sounds crazy, but they just keep rolling in. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, you know, they're rolling in so fast, I can't keep up with them and I'm trying to build my team too. Um, I also was very fortunate to be on the Ask Gary V show with Tim Ferriss. I don't know if anyone saw that posted. I think I posted it on um, this group, but I got to ask questions about how to grow my, my company as a VA. And Tim Ferriss is a huge, um, uh, he promotes VA, the VA world in his uh, five hour work week or four hour work week or whatever it is. Um, so, I got so many warm leads from be, just being on that show. So it, my, my journey is a little bit different because I was fortunate to have that opening. And, but I think just getting out and talking to people and putting your name out there um, is the most important marketing. Um, I did have a coffee chat with somebody yesterday and I told her I was gonna say it today too. I was like, the one, the one thing I can say, and I know we don't have a whole lot of time left, um, is don't be afraid of a no. Like I talk to anyone and everyone and any meeting that I go into, I prepare myself for, it's not gonna be a right fit. So if it's not a right fit, it's no big deal, right? And we move on to the next person. And I think having that mentality has helped me be confident when I'm talking to new clients in discovery calls because I'm able to um, show people my value um, and how I work with other people and it reflects through my other clients. So yeah. I don't know if that makes any sense or if that's oh, so good. Question, so but... good. There's so many good things there. I think that um yeah, for the the whole no thing, especially. I mean, when you're first starting out, it may take you ten no's to get a yes. Well, that's okay then. Get ten no's and then get your your yes, and then get another ten no's and then get your yes. Like that's okay. And it's actually pretty normal. Now, the more you get going, like uh, like Nicole said, you're going to get um, you you get your first clients. You do really incredible work for them. I mean, just doesn't mean that you have to be an expert, but just be attentive to their needs. Just be a good hard worker. Just give them excellent work. They're going to start referring you, and those leads are going to already be warm leads. They're already. I love the idea. I'm a huge fan of having pricing on your site. I know people go back and forth on that. I love having pricing on your site, or at least a like packages starting at, just to kind of go ahead and weed out the people who can't afford you, and um and and then going from there. So I just so much good information here. I mean, we've talked about uh, live networking events. We've talked about going like door-to-door -to, -door to businesses, we've talked about referrals, we've talked about your 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 network, your friends and family, um, we've talked about Craigslist, but not a Craigslist ad. I mean, there, there's so, there's, there are so many clients out there. And I know the VA world is, it seems, it seems really big, but guys, we, we are really on the cusp. When there's people who still don't know what a virtual assistant is, and when you take into consideration how many small business owners there are right now, but how many are starting every single year too, Guys, we are on to something here. So do not give up. Keep going. Okay, we're going to hear from you. And then we will wrap up the show. Your current marketing efforts and how has that changed? Oh, I muted you. <laughs> I was muting you. <laughs> back earlier. <laughs> we're good now. <laughs> we're good now. Oh, okay. So my first client actually came from the... Um, uh, from a group that's no longer open now. She she shut down the group, but um, it was actually um, a fellow veteran. I um, I um, did um, time in the service, and so I knew how to get those type of clients, and she was starting up her business, and she's absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. And um, that's how I got my first client. It was that simple. My marketing has definitely changed uh, because I definitely changed my business around. However, 
Um, word of mouth is my number one way of getting clients. To be honest with you, my corporate level clients are always sending people over to me. And that is in itself overwhelming because I can't take on too many corporate level um, clients. However, I have a whole team of other people I can refer them to. So definitely uh, word of mouth. My next theme is I go to local job fairs. I also go to um, different uh, around my area because um, again, I live in the Atlanta area. There are events going on every single time. So with Lynn, I'm always going out there. I also do interviews with other people to get my name out there. The whole thing is people to get your get yourself out there. I know there's a lot of introverts. I get it. I am not an introvert. I am an extrovert. However, I live with the introvert my husband is, and I'm always telling him, "Babe, you just have to go for it. It is. It is." very scary at first but trust me you just want to just push yourself out put yourself forward and have confidence in what you're offering people will see that and they will want to work with you as long as you're giving value and like abby said rock that client's world i'm telling you give them what they're asking for plus more and i promise you other clients will start flowing in you know and develop a system to keep that consistent income coming in you know don't just settle for one client even if that one client is 5k right you know keep finding clients keep developing those relationships and keep putting your name out there whether it's facebook ads instagram ads whether it's going to local events whether it is, is word of mouth you know everything works together um and depending on what it is if you're a general va there are not a lot of vas here in atlanta georgia that i know about <laughs> not going to events they're not putting themselves out there they may be there right but nobody knows because you have to get outside of your computer. You have to take yourself to these events. You have to put yourself out there. And that's key. You know, get yourself out there. Get out of your little shell. I, too, have to climb into my shell at night and cover up, you know, to re-energize myself for the next day. But do what you need to do. Energize yourself and kick kick behind or kick ass the next day okay i'm not even gonna sugar on it get out there and kick some ass that's that's just how it is and i want you guys to know that you know it is scary i know some of you guys are like i work a full-time job and, and things of that nature how do i market it's so easy you know what i'm saying on the weekends when you're going to the pta meetings with your kids Talk to the PTA board, you know, talk to your local school board. Trust me that everybody needs someone's help, you know, and they definitely need generalized VAs. You guys take so much stress off of everybody else. Know your worth. You know, go out there and tell them what you do. I actually am developing my own VA business. Can you believe it? What is a VA? I'm a virtual assistant. You know, I help people to take the stress and take their time back to do what they love. You, heard, you have heard that before, and I know it sounds cheesy, but that's exactly what you do, you know, and, and that's okay. You know, get out there and put yourself out there. Don't be afraid. That's my number one marketing tip is don't be afraid. Get yourself out there and stay relevant. You know, keep educating yourself. Keep growing, and uh, that's what I do every single day. I'm always learning. On Sundays is my learning hours. I sit down. I continue to learn in my field. I continue to educate myself. I continue to, you know, respond to you guys. You guys teach me so much, believe it or not. Um, I'm always listening to what Abby has to say. I'm always listening to Susan Mature. I'm always listening to my mentors because they're always teaching me something new. So, you know, if you need a mentor, if you need a business coach, if you need, you know, to take a course, if you need to do however it is that you learn, if you're one of those people who need to get your hand held, if you're one of those people who just like, just give me a course, do your learning style and keep educating yourself because your clients are going to use you and build you. And you're going to find out that maybe I'm not just a general VA. Maybe I am an OVM. You know, maybe I am a project manager. You know, your clients will help you, you know, mold what it is that you want to do. So don't be afraid to get yourself out there. And that's basically all I have to say about it. So <laughs> so good. So good. Oh my gosh, I'm loving this oh so gosh, much. So oh, good. LK, Lynn, Nicole, thank you guys so, so much. I know that this has been just 
incredible. I mean, we literally, we had 60 people watching live and I don't think hardly any of them jumped off. You guys um, answered so many incredible questions. I know that this isn't the end of you guys' questions. So let me tell you, um, if you are like, I, I want more, I want more information, we are going to, um, I'm personally gonna be in the comments answering some questions, referring you guys to some awesome um, articles for a lot of your questions. And we're, we're, going, we're going to dive in and get into this topic. If you are still on in those beginning stages and you really, you're like, man, this sounds amazing, but I don't know entirely uh, what my next steps are. What should I be doing? I need like a step by step process, then um, go to uh, virtualassistantchecklist.com, virtualassistantchecklist.com, and you'll be able to um, see, let's see, I think I have a link for it. There we go. <laughs> virtualassistantchecklist.com. Um, you'll you'll get my step-by-step -step checklist for getting started in your own virtual assistant business. But at the same time, we'll be in the comments. We will be answering questions. So make sure that you're commenting. Share this with anybody else that you think would be a good fit as a VA, guys. Um, thank you so much again to our guests, to our VAs who are killing it out there. Um, they are making a difference in the world. They're making a difference in their families. And they are are um, such an inspiration to all of us. So thank you guys. Um, thank you all for joining. And this is the Savvy Show. We'll be doing this um, every single Thursday on the Virtual Savvy uh, Facebook page right here every Thursday. You can find us at 1030 a.m. Central and there'll always be a replay if you can't make it live. Thank you guys so much. Let's, we got a, here we go. You got to dance it out, right? <laughs> All right. Have a good one, everybody.